Hey everyone, my name is Riley and this video is a complete beginner's tutorial for Google Calendar. This video will show you everything that you need to know about Google Calendar, including navigating the dashboard, creating and adding new events, adding and creating different calendars for organization, sharing your calendars and much, much more. If this is your first time using Google Calendar, all you need to do is follow along with this tutorial and you will walk away as a Google Calendar expert. So to get started with Google Calendar, you can either come straight over here to calendar.google.com or you can click on the top link down in the description and that's going to take you over to Google Calendar. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that by default, as soon as you come over to Google Calendar, it's going to automatically sign you in with your default Google account. So if you have multiple Google accounts right here, make sure that you go ahead and select the Google account that you would like to use for your calendar. You can see the Google account that is currently being used at the top right here. So make sure that is the correct email address. And then we can jump into how to actually use Google Calendar. To give you an overview of this, this is your main Google Calendar right here. By default, this is going to show you a week view. So we can see from Sunday, to Saturday. This is the current week that we are on. We can change the time scale of the calendar by clicking on this button in the top right corner. And then we can change this between an entire year. So we can see the year right here. However, with the year, you will not actually be able to see any events that are on your calendar. It's just going to show you all the dates of the year. We can then go back and flick this to monthly. And right here, we can start seeing some of the events that we have on the calendar. For example, we can see these events in green and we can see these are holidays in the United Kingdom because this is also green. We can also see some of my personal tasks, which are right here in blue. And these are just some Zoom meetings that I've had over the past month. So right now we are looking at June, but we can also flick this back to May. We can flick this back to April or we can flick forward using these arrows at the top to skip between different months. We can then choose to go back to the weekly calendar and this is going to take us back to the default view on the current week. And then we can also go in even further and just have this set to the current day that we are on. Over here on the left hand side, we can see the entire month and all of the dates are going to be listed right here, like a regular calendar that you would put on your wall. Down here, we have all of the calendars that you are currently viewing. And by default, this is going to be your name, birthdays, tasks, and then holidays in your country. We can add and delete calendars later on, but for now, let's just leave this as this is. Let's now add some events to the calendar. And to do this, I actually want to go back to the monthly view as this gives me a bird's eye view of the entire month. To add an event to the calendar, all you need to do is find the date that the event is on. So let's say I have a meeting tomorrow on Saturday the 29th. Well, I'm just going to click on the 29th and in here, we can start planning out the event that we have. What I prefer to do rather than typing here, because right here, it's a little bit too small, is I prefer to open up the more options section. And this is going to take us over to a bigger screen where we can plan the event better. So up here, we can add a title. I'm going to say that this is a meeting with Paul. So I type in meeting with Paul. We can then set when this event actually is. So by default, this is going to be set to all day. So this is perfect if you are putting into your calendar a birthday or an event that lasts all day. However, my meeting with Paul is only going to be around two hours. So let's uncheck this and we can now set the time that this meeting is. So let's click on start at and then we can set this to 12 p.m. 12 p.m. to and then 2 p.m. is perfect. We can also go down and choose if this event repeats. So if this is a daily recurring event, then we could set this right here to daily. And it's then going to add this event in every single day to my calendar. We can also do this for weekly on Saturday as this event would be on a Saturday. We can set this to monthly, annually, or every weekday, or we could even go for custom right here. And let's say that this is every two weeks. Well, we would set this to 14 days, done. And then this is now going to repeat every 14 days. However, I'm going to say this does not repeat. We can then go down and if this meeting was to happen on Google Meets, well, we could connect up Google Meets right here and then it's going to give us a very easy link to join. If we want to do this, we just click on add. This is automatically going to connect up with Google Meet. And then all we have to do when it comes to this meeting is click join with Google Meet. 
and it's going to take us straight over to Google Meet right here. So a very easy option if you do use Google Meet for your meetings. But alternatively, we do have a few other options for locations. The first is if this is a physical location, then we can just type this in. Let's say this is at the Shard in London. I could just type in the Shard, select this, and it's automatically going to fill in the rest of the address. Alternatively, let's say this is a Zoom meeting that you want to meet with this person over. Well, all we need to do is back out. Let me just go into Zoom real quick. We can then go ahead and grab the Zoom meeting link, paste it in right here, and this is now the location. So all we have to do is click on this Zoom link and it will take us over to this Zoom meeting. Next, we can set if we want to receive a notification for this. So if we set this on, Google Calendar will give you a notification on either your computer or on your phone, depending on where you are logged in, for a set amount of time before this meeting. So we can change this between either a notification or an email. We can then say how long before the meeting do we want to be reminded. So we could say one hour before, and then we can also add an additional notification. So I could say I want to be reminded one hour before and I also want to be reminded five minutes before and you can really set as many notifications as you like to make sure that you don't miss any meetings. We can also go down and choose a colour for this meeting. So you may want to colour coordinate your calendar and this is very very handy to see between certain things. So maybe I want to set my meetings as red and then I can change my lunch break to green I can change any events that I have with my kids to blue and it just allows you to organize your calendar in a way that you can instantly see what you have planned for the day as it's color coordinated. Down here, we can then set if you are going to appear as busy or free when this event is on. Now, this is only going to matter if you are sharing your calendar with other people and allowing them to see your schedule. If you are not, then just ignore this section at the bottom. However, if you are sharing your calendar with other people, then it's always a good idea to set this to certain parameters. So if I'm in a meeting with Paul, I'm definitely going to be busy. So I'll want to set this to busy. Then we can also choose if this meeting is public or private. So once again, with people that you share your calendar with, will they be able to see this meeting and be able to tell that you are in a meeting? For me, I definitely want to set this to public. We can then go down to description and if you have a description about this event, well, you can type in a few sentences here to help you remember what this event is. This is especially useful if you are planning an event a few months in advance, then it's a very good idea to have a description here. So I just said this is a meeting with Paul to go over his company's financials. Finally, we have this guest tab on this right hand side and in here we can add any guests that are going to come to this meeting. So for example, as this is a meeting with Paul, well, I want to send Paul an invitation and let him know that this is happening. Especially if this is an online meeting like Zoom or Google Meets, well, adding a guest here is going to send them an invitation and it's going to send them a link so that they are able to join that meeting. All we have to do is click on add guests and then type in the email of the guest that you would like to add. And then I can see that I am the organizer this is my calendar. And then this is the email of the person I would like to invite. We can also choose guest permissions. So whether they can modify the event and reschedule it, whether they can invite other people and whether they can see the guest list. So I like this. I want him to be able to invite any other people that might be relevant to the call. And I also want him to see the guest list, but I don't want him to be able to modify this. Once your event is set up like this, we just click on save and it's then going to ask if we have a guest in here, would you like to send invitation emails to the Google Calendar guests? Now, of course I do. So I'm going to click on send right here and back on the calendar. I can now see on Saturday the 29th, my meeting with Paul is right here at 12 p.m. So I can now click into this. I can see the Zoom link that I set up that I can join. I just click on this and then I can go straight into that Zoom meeting. If you had another location set up, then that's just going to show right there. I can see the guests, I can see the notes that I created, and this is everything that I need to know about the meeting. Now, if I take a look at Paul's point of view, because remember, we added Paul as a guest. If I now go over to Paul's email, 
you can see I have this email that says invitation from unknown sender meeting with Paul and it has this big grey bar at the top because it says this event isn't in your calendar yet and you have never interacted with this person before. So if this is somebody you know, you've already set up a few meetings in the past, then this won't show up. So Paul can come down here. He obviously knows that he has a meeting with me. This is why I've scheduled it. So he can add this to his own calendar if he wants to. He can then see the Zoom link that he has to join right here or Google Meets or wherever you set this to, the location is going to show right there. The time, who this is with and everything else that he needs to know is shown right here. Let's go ahead and set up one more event. Now we are coming to the end of the month. So we are currently on the 28th. So I'm going to flick over to July right here because on Monday, I actually have a salsa class coming up. So once again, we just click on the date that this event is on more options, add the title. So this is going to be salsa class. We can then choose the date and time. Of course, this is not an all day event. So we can go in and this class is actually from 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. So 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We can set that right there. The location, let's just add the shard in London. We can then set a notification once again. So if we want to be reminded of this, and for the color, I'm actually going to go ahead and set this to yellow as this is just a salsa class. And this is for me personally. Of course, we are not going to add any guests. So let's go up and click save. And we now have the salsa class on the calendar. We can also edit events by finding an event that you have created. We can click into this. And then all we have to do is click on this edit event icon and we can go in and change anything that we need to change. For example, if my salsa class is actually changed from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m., well, I can just set that right there. Something else I might want to do is set my salsa class to occur weekly. So let's click back in, edit, and then right here where it says does not repeat, we can say this repeats weekly on a Monday. Now, watch what happens as soon as I click on save. It's automatically going to schedule this salsa class in for every week on a Monday. Perfect. If we want to delete a certain element, for example, let's say on the 15th, this is actually canceled. Well, we can click in, we can click on delete event right here. And then it's going to ask delete recurring event. Do we just want to delete this event, this and following events or all events? Now I don't want to remove everything. So I'm just going to say this event just like that is going to be removed on the 15th whilst all of the others remain. But for now, I'm just going to go back in real quick and set this to does not repeat just as an example to clear up the calendar. Now, the reason that I went ahead and added that second event is to show you how we can add in different calendars right here. To do this, we just go down to this other calendars section along the bottom, click on this plus icon, and then we can create a new calendar. Now, the first calendar that I am going to create is going to be for my work meetings. So let's create this calendar right here. We can then click on create calendar and this calendar is now going to be created. I'm also going to create a second calendar and call this leisure. And then we can create this calendar once again. And once this loads in, you will see the colors right now are not set to the correct colors, but let's not worry about that because we can go out. And then all we have to do to change the color of these calendars. So leisure, I want this to be yellow. So we go leisure, these three dots, set this to yellow. And then for work meetings, I want this to be red. So work meetings, click on this and set this to red. So now we can go in and we can actually assign these different meetings to these different calendars. So meeting with Paul, I'm going to click in and this is where we can edit the meeting right here. So what we can do is click on edit event. Then once we are in the edit screen, you can see the current calendar that we have selected. So this is just set to my regular calendar, Riley Holden. Let's click in edit. And then we can set this from Riley Holden to work meetings. Then we can save this. And this is now set to work meetings. We can then go to the salsa class, edit this, and then we can set this to leisure, save. And this is now going to be set to leisure. So what we can now do now that we have these different calendars set up is we could go ahead and turn one off. For example, I can now turn off work meetings and this is going to show me everything on the calendar aside from my work meetings. I can turn off leisure and this is going to show me everything on the calendar aside from leisure. 
and you can go down and toggle on and off the different things that you want to view on your calendar and it's going to add and remove them accordingly. With that said, you might want to share certain calendars with certain people. So for example, with work meetings, I might want to share this to other people at my company so that they can see all of the meetings that I have booked. And I also may want to share leisure with my wife so that she can see all of the leisure activities that we have coming up. So to do this, we just go to the calendar that we would like to share. So work meetings, I'm going to share with colleagues. We click on these three dots then settings and sharing. And then if we scroll down, we basically have two options to do this. We can either click on get shareable link. And just like this, we can now share this link with anybody who we want to share the calendar with. They can then click that and get access to your calendar. Or alternatively, we can add people and groups right here. So we just click add people and groups, enter in the email of the people you would like to share this with. Then we can choose permissions, if they can make changes to events, if they can see event details, make changes and manage sharing. I'm just going to leave this as see event details and send. And then this person is now able to see specifically my work meetings calendar. So they won't be able to see any of the other calendars. What else I'm doing, they will only be able to see that calendar. Then for leisure, I can go in settings and sharing. Then we can go down and add people once again. So I can add this in with my wife and for my wife, I want her to be able to make changes to events. So we can set that there, send. And now my wife can see all of my leisure activities. She can add things, she can change things around. And that's how you can share your calendar. The final thing that I want to show you inside of Google Calendar is the settings area. And there are just some settings and preferences that we can tweak. So click on the settings icon and then go into settings. And from here, we can change the language that you are in. You can change your country, the date and time format. We can change the time zone that you are using. So let's say that instead of the UK time, I actually want to be using Eastern time. Then I would just go up here and I would set this to Eastern time, just like this. Perfect. We can also choose if you want to show the world clock within your Google Calendar. And then there are a few other settings that you might want to go down and change. But I don't want to spend a long time going over each of these as this video would just take too long. So you can change things like the notification settings, how these work, the view options, whether you want to show weekends, show declined events, things like this. But for now, let's just back out with the changes that we have. And we can now see that because I am on the Eastern time zone, my salsa class has moved back to 2 p.m., which now reflects the Eastern time. We can also go up to the settings icon and into trash. And this is where you can find any meetings that you have gotten rid of. So if you deleted an event and then you decide, actually, I kind of want that event back. Well, we just go into trash and then we can click on restore event. And that event is going to be added back to your calendar. So I just restored that event called birthday. We can see that right here. Perfect. And then the final thing that we can do is go into settings, density and color. And in here, we can set how this is going to look. So we can see right now, this is set to modern with white text. However, sometimes, especially on yellow, this can be a little bit hard to see. So we can set this to black text. We can also set the information density. So responsive to your screen is usually going to be a little bit bigger. And then compact is going to make this a little bit smaller. I prefer to leave this to responsive to your screen, but it is completely up to you. So that is my complete guide on how to use Google Calendar. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.